general relativity step by step. I've got a vector v here and I want to consider what happens if I try and differentiate that vector with respect to a particular coordinate basis uh, which I'm going to call i. Uh, well v equals just a regular vector vi ei summed over i of course and so I've got d by dx i i. See I've got a problem already because I'm summing over i here because I've got this repeated index so I'm just going to change it to j. Okay so what have I got here? Well I've got di vj by di xi ej summed over j plus vj di ej by di xi so this is pretty much a, a pretty much a perfectly sensible uh, sensible quantity here uh, it's this one here i need to define so what i'm going to do i'm going to I'm going to see if I can do it without confusing myself. I'm going to define ej by di x i to equal a new thing, which I'm going to call, uh, I think that's a Greek letter, gamma. Alpha, beta, gamma. Is that gamma? I think it's a gamma. Now then, let's get this right. And that's e i j k summed over k i and j. And these things, which I'm going to talk about for the next two or three screencasts, are called under K I J Gamma, I'm sorry, equals Christoffel symbols. And I'm going to define these and talk about them. And if we can use them here in this context here, then we can use this to work out the um, derivative of a vector field, which is an interesting and useful thing to be able to do. One thing I'm not going to cover, I know I said it's um, relativity step by step. Uh, oops, I'm going to cover, I'm going to assume that this is the case. This is called torsion, torsion free. We're going to have a torsion free uh, system. Uh, that's physics, not maths. Oops. Well, it's a little bit of maths, I guess. This is just the assumption that is generally made in general relativity. My understanding is there's a certain amount of um, experimental evidence to support this. Uh, it, it's just very complicated to deal with non-torsion free systems. So I'm just going to assume that and have done with it. Okay so what, what have we got left? Um, let me just write this formula out again here. This formula out again here just a minute. My uh, interface is misbehaving. Um, where was I? Yes, I'm just going to rewrite this in a slightly different... Uh, I'm going to put the summations back in. Di ej by di xi. We're differentiating a vector, coordinate basis vector ej, with respect to coordinate i. And I'm going to assert that that's equal to sum over k of this new thing, k i j e k. Oh, and that should be a vector. Okay, so we're going to have to figure out what these things are, and then we're going to be able to use it to differentiate stuff. Great. Um, how do I do that? Well, well, it's not altogether obvious how we do that. It's, it's, it's as we saw in the h theta coordinate system, it's hard. There's quite a lot of algebra, and it's a mess of indices and summations and fundamental tensors and metric tensors and stuff. So we're going to have to go slowly. Yeah, we're going to have to go slowly. What I want to do is to start by differentiating the metric tensor with respect to the coordinate basis. And that's equal to di by di x k of e i. I might write that a bit more neatly. e i dot e j. Okay, equals what? Ei dot di ej by di xk plus di ei by di xk dot ej equals. By definition, you'll remember the definition that we had up here of um, the Christoffel symbol, which we're going to need to differentiate stuff. So let's just think about that. 
We've got a J and an I. We've got a J, that's a subscript, so that's downstairs. I is on the denominator, so that's downstairs. And we're summing over a 1 up and 1 down in there. Um, I'm going to try and not write the signal down. So let's see if I can write this down. That's EI dot lambda, and I'll fill in the indices in a minute. There we go. Actually, I'll take out that dot and just leave that there. Uh, no, it is a dot, because this this thing's a vector. I just need to bracket it like that. What have I got left? We've got a J and a K downstairs, and upstairs, let's call it L, L. Plus, just a minute, plus, I can't, don't scroll. Um, we've got the same thing here. We've got a lambda, sorry, a gamma, E, in brackets dot e j so that e j is this one here this term is that term in there uh, that term's that one there and this one's this thing here we've got an i and a k on the bottom and i guess i can call it an l again so long as we don't get too confused about that equals j k e i dot e l for the first term plus gamma l i k e l dot e j for the second term equals g i l for the metric tensor because the metric tensor by definition is the dot product of all the um, coordinate basis vectors with one another i k for the second term g l j and that equals, what does that equal? I can't remember now. Oh, here it is. Di G I J by Di X K. Let's just have a look at that. There's quite a lot going on here. Remembering that we're summing over L here and here, and here and here. And we've got I, J and K, which are free. We've got I, J and K, which are free on either side. I'm going to stick with that and I'm going to stop here at the end of this screencast. I'm going to cut this screencast off here because I'm going to use this equation to calculate what the Christoffel symbols are actually equal to in terms of the fundamental tensor. But it's not entirely straightforward, so I'm going to stop there.